There I was, about to try out the most brutal martial art out there, and to find out how to use aggression in a fight. But this journey began a few months ago when I tried what I thought to be the most extreme martial art in the world, Kudo. A Japanese hybrid of martial arts that features headbutts, elbows, and throws. Yet as I soon learned, that's not what most people consider the most extreme martial art. Instead, I was suggested to try out Lethway, a brutal martial art originated in Myanmar. But after searching for Lethway gyms across the globe, I realized that they pretty much don't exist at all. Wanting to still try it out, I thought about going to Myanmar itself. But unfortunately, at the moment the country is in a heated civil war. But then, seeing no more options, as a last resort, I decided to try to contact the world's biggest figure in Lethway, and I wrote to Dave LeDuc, the undefeated Lethway champion. I'm always a bit anxious writing to famous people, since none of us want to feel rejected if they don't write back, and for a while I didn't receive an answer and felt like a failure. But then… A week later, his assistant wrote back and told me that I could come over to film. Soon enough, I bought tickets and made my way to Turkey, Antalya together with my wife Gabby to meet and train with the champion of Lethway. But I was also on another mission. One of the main questions I had for Dave was about aggression, since after I lost my second MMA fight, I started questioning if I lack aggression in the ring and how I can access it. And Dave was the perfect person to ask, since Lethway is as brutal as it gets by including bare knuckle fighting, full contact headbutts, a 2 minute chance to revive a knocked out fighter to continue fighting, and a draw if both fighters are standing after 5 rounds. I also wanted to make a great video on how anyone can be a fighter, since I hate it when people tell me that I don't have what it takes to be one, and that you're either born a fighter or you're not. But little did I know that things will not go as I planned. Once we made our way to Antalya, I got a shave that my wife demanded me to get before filming since otherwise I looked like, I quote, a wild lumberman. And after we stepped over a dozen of dogs sleeping on the ground, we reached the gym where we were supposed to meet Dave. But he wasn't there. Only then I realized that while organizing this meeting, I never once had actual contact with Dave himself and spoke only to his assistant. So I had to ask myself, what if Dave never actually agreed to film with me and we made all this way for nothing? As I was waiting for Dave hoping that he will show up, it was a great opportunity to speak about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. These days I travel a lot and when I do, I constantly bump into problems associated with viewing content in other countries. For example, in my trip to Singapore, I couldn't watch Formula 1, even though I pay for it subscription. That is because the app lets you watch Formula 1 races live only in certain countries. But this is where ExpressVPN came to help. It's an app that lets me change my online location. This lets me trick the Formula 1 app into thinking I'm in the required country so I can watch the race. Using ExpressVPN, not only did I manage to watch the F1 race, I was also able to enjoy the Netflix shows that I wasn't allowed to watch while back in my home country Lithuania, since there are so many shows only on other countries' Netflix libraries. Like for example, Attack on Titan on Japan's Netflix, or The Office in UK. Case Netflix. And using ExpressVPN also comes with other benefits, such as enhanced privacy and security too. So if you want to try out ExpressVPN, go to expressvpn.com slash martial arts and get an extra free month of ExpressVPN for free. Coming back to my story, Dave still didn't show up and we received no messages from him or his assistant. Puzzled, my wife and I went back to the hotel, desperate on what to do next. But then finally, Dave reached out to me. Turns out, he had an emergency and had to postpone the meeting to the next day. So after exploring Antalya and meeting a dozen of cats seemingly owning the city, the following day, we finally met Dave LeDuc. Watching Dave warm up was scary enough, as he was hitting the pads with elbows and headbutts, something that I will be doing soon enough myself. But first, Dave and I took a closer look at some of the crazy Lethway rules. And in Lethway, the fun part is that uh -huh. you can grab the hair. Oh, really? So let's over clench. Oh, no. <laughs> let's say I, you're, you're tightening, right? So one right. of the ways to block the, the pressure, right? I can either put here, yeah. right? I can be like this, right. just squeeze, right? mm. or we can just be very, very tight. But now, I don't have enough room to hit, but you and vice versa. Right. And like you're protecting, so I can't, I can't do this. Right. right, yeah. So a lot of times, the guy that's going to grab the hair, create space and smash. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, why I shave. So you have an advantage. <laughs> me, I'm already grabbed the hair. But the guys don't shave their heads? There's a lot of vanity. In Asia, they love to have the, oh. the long hair. And I've uh, seen a lot of times uh, the guys like just don't fight without a mouthpiece. They not, fight it's... without? Yeah. Yeah. You don't. I fight with a mouthpiece because I like my teeth. Yeah, of course. <laughs> First, let's go fight. Okay. I fought 2-2. Two, two. I fucked him up for like four rounds. I think mm -hmm. or the fifth round, he took it out while we're fighting. So he was like, really? he's all bloody. He's like... <laughs> The referee looked at it. He's like, oh yeah, didn't care. You're the local guy, he's the foreigner. 
if you want to do this, I respect you. Was that like kind of like I'm gonna go all out? I think it's like okay, I'm done. Alright, let's fucking go. But right. it didn't change much. <laughs> <laughs> I then asked Dave on how he conditions his hands for bare knuckle fighting. So you see a lot of emphasis on the elbows because yeah. I don't want to break my hands a lot. Sure. I've seen a lot of foreigners go in Myanmar, hands in ice bucket, they broke their hands. You know, there's a lot of guys that don't give a. F they're just gonna go, you know, with like with sand and right. hit concrete. A lot of my students sometimes they send me videos and they're, <laughs> they're hitting the, the brick wall. I'm like guys, <laughs> you're gonna regret it in you know yeah. in 20 years. So I'm trying to balance this out of like having a strong bone structure, strong hands. So I do a lot of uh, push-ups to strengthen the, the, the ligaments, the tendons, mm -hmm. the bones. Wrist push-up as well because sometimes the wrist can collapse, like I said, right. uh, upon yeah. impact. Can I try those? Yeah, let's do it. It's <laughs> For people that have never done it before, they can do it like on their knees. It's still a lot of pressure. When you do it on your knees, go slow because you don't want to break. Your finger yeah. can pop. A lot of times I've seen you know, dislocated fingers. I actually right. had my own finger dislocated when I fought in Japan. In the second round, I come back to the corner and I see my finger completely out of the socket. My corner man, he speaks Burmese. Right. I, have, I don't have right. an English speaking corner man. Right. So I'm in my corner and I'm like, how do I tell him to pop it in? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't know yes or no in English. Yeah. That's how he's Burmese, you know? He's mm -hmm. a former champion in Myanmar. He doesn't pull it out. He puts it in the ice instead. <laughs> and my opponent speaks English. I don't want to make a scene because he's going to know that I'm injured. So I have to go back to the fight, mm -hmm. but I go like this. I can't close it. It's out of the socket. So I fought the entire fight, the rest of the fight without my, ran my right hand. And that actually, I think it was pressure builds diamond or like mm -hmm, nothing mm -hmm. good comes, comes out of comfort. Maybe if I, I didn't have that, I would have fought the same way I always fought. Right. But because of that, it made me think outside the box and I landed my first really strong headbutts. It was a bloodbath. It was a good fight. And after that, I went to the doctor. He yeah. pulled it out. It was a matter of a second. I could have, oh, I could, so I could have been able, you know. But it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other one is wrist push-ups. This is very tricky, very uncomfortable for some yeah. for people that never yeah. done it before. So guys do it carefully. It's half mentality training, like pain threshold mentality. And then you go, yeah. yes, you got it. Yeah, it's, it, it's cool, not bad, right? There's work to do though. Yeah, a lot of people cannot do that the first time, I'm telling yeah. you, so you're good. It so, actually made me for my Aikido training. I think we used so. to do a lot of wrist stuff. I mean, I'm impressed, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, after finishing up with knuckle jump push ups, mm. so just tiny. Sorry. Yeah. Dave gave a master class on setting up headbutts. A lot of guys do it from, out, from outside. Jumping headbutt or, or mm -hmm. missile headbutt. It's very right. risky because you can you can stop me with an elbow, okay, right? Okay, that, that elbow is dangerous. Head, but that's not my style. My style, I like to grab something. First of all, now we're, we're both in danger because you can headbutt me, boom, mm -hmm. and I could. First thing is, I lose an arm. Mm -hmm. and to protect from your headbutt. Here, I control whatever you go. Mm -hmm. It's gonna stun me, right? Boom, but not gonna cut me. I'm avoiding the cut. So that I can release, strike. It's all keeping a strong spine. I don't wanna whip it. Right. I wanna mm -hmm. keep it tight, mm -hmm. and I wanna push with my legs, so. Okay. Crack, you know, so it's all it's all lower body. It reminds me almost like a punch when they say that the punch starts from the, the leg. It seems like the head as well. It's not like, it's like not this, not this, but it's like, it's like mentioned, it's actually yeah, like that's a, a straight good, That's line. a good comparison, actually. You don't want to throw just a headbutt, just yeah. and you want to follow with something. One, two, and then my, your hook. You see my hand after my hook, yeah. it's kind of like a, a knight. So my shield here, I'm going to drive, and mm -hmm. it's I'm, I'm going to drive, and it's protecting from your, your attack. Boom, push forward, you can't, yeah. right? Yeah, right, you're... So that's also a protection from your headbutt, because mm -hmm. I don't have the hand this time. But I can collapse and go. I release, and then <laughs> boom, on the jaw or right. this excuse i can swear in your on your oh, please, please do. <laughs> yes. boom mm -hmm. from there my elbow is locked is and loaded boom damn no wonder you're a champion <laughs> headbutts don't look scientific you know but there's a lot of aspects so one two three headbutt right. elbow Try to pierce the elbow a little bit higher. Oh. But the reality is because a lot of times if I'm blocking like this, you're gonna block it. Right. But if I'm, if I'm going like from one to six, yeah. I can go inside, right? Mm. So I always like to overextend high. That's my <laughs> Solid, solid. Good teacher. <laughs> After training the headbutt for a while, we took a look at training headbutts on a bag, where it turns out that in order to minimize impact on the brain and to focus on longevity, when working on the bag, Dave makes the headbutts light. Right, release the back, not too hard. So you're not training power here, you're no. just training the training reflex. The reflex right? yeah. They've also shown me a pain point that he pressures with his head during his fights. Like, oh, you see, I, you know, one, two, three, head, oh, go oh, head, butt, pinch. I'm inside, right? I'm here, I'm squeezing here, and I go for the thing. Ah, 
Yeah, right. I'll do it. We then moved on to some pain threshold training. Three, four, five. Uh, ah! <laughs> but it turns out Dave does this type of training for profound reasons. The reason why I'm doing this, a lot of emphasis on the mentality is because fighting I feel like is 90% mental and it's the one that's the most hungry and the most crazy. Let's say me and you, we go outside now and there's be, there'd, be a, there'd be a fight and a lot of people want to fight us. Who you'd rather have on your side? A guy that has his eight pack, he's training and he's doing Instagram or a guy that just come out of the, the hardest prison in Lithuania or Russia and he's like, I just got stabbed t seven times but I'm, I don't give up. He takes a true, yes, technique is important, but I feel like the guy that wants it the most is gonna win. So you have to have like your why, why? Why are you doing this? Is it for money? Is it to avenge your ego? Is it because you were bullied? Like you need a why. As you kind of go to closure with your with these things, your demons, as I came to, to fruition or closure with, with all these traumas, I don't really, feel like I need to fight anymore. Because I understand the reason why I wanted to fight for the first thing. I do feel like I have a couple more fights, but after that, I want to enjoy the fruits. Sure, you, yeah. like you conquered the world already. Yeah. <laughs> but in order to do that, I do believe that you cannot become world champion in, in a full contact, you know, high pressured environment like you know, MMA or, or, or let's wear Muay Thai, if you don't have a, a big reason to, 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 to fight. For me, for example, I was always very skinny, told like, oh, you don't eat enough. In a way, I kind of thought like, what, do you, what does it mean? Like, you think I'm not strong enough? I can show you. And I don't even need to gain weight to show my strength. We can be strong without excess muscular weight. I, you know, I'm kind of fighting to, to show the world that like the little Dave that was at high school, at preschool, that was a very, very, you know, very skinny. Look, you know, we can fight. We can go fight Lithuania. Yeah. At one point, oh, you come to peace with them. Mm -hmm. You don't have to prove it anymore. Right. Otherwise, like, how many belts is enough? How many millions, how many billions is enough? Either you deal with these traumas or you don't. And if you don't, well, you're just going to be on a never-ending journey to basically soothe that kid of you. This conversation made me think about my why of fighting and to question that maybe it's not as much aggression that I'm lacking, although it would be useful, but that maybe my why of fighting isn't strong enough. During my years of practicing Aikido, I was conditioned to not focus on winning, a part of Aikido's philosophy, and I just realized that this mentality was probably getting in my way when fighting. It became clear that I needed to reassess my why of fighting, but then I also still had my question about anyone being capable of becoming a fighter, a question that I was about to ask right after we did some extreme neck conditioning. Having a strong neck prevents you from being knocked out. Very, very few guys were doing mm. it. Okay, 10. Okay. Now we're at 30. Yeah. If it's starting to burn, they need to, that means they need to do way more. Like we're right. gonna try to do 100. Okay, <laughs> let's try. I do about 300 of that uh, every day. So. Oh, yeah. okay. One, two. Over time, you can actually put a little weight. Two. Oh my God. <laughs> now we're at 100. How do you feel? I'm getting <laughs> to my limit. But now this one. Oh, okay. This is from a company in the United States. I actually gave one to Joe Rogan when I was there. Two, three. The antagonist muscle of what we just did. But you want to try? Yes. So it looks like a, a torture, right. torture device, right? <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Nice. Like it? I love it. Another, <laughs> another hundred. Let's do it. Fuck it. Off yeah. Off okay. Off hundred. You can do it. Okay. Finally, after doing 100 more reps, I had a chance to ask my big question. I am like a peaceful guy. And when I got into combat sports, a lot of people were giving me crap. Like, ah, you're too peaceful. You're mm. not born a fighter. Mm. And I was like upset. Like I don't have the fighter like mentality just like from the get-go, but I can be a fighter. And yeah. that's one of the things I wanted to prove. Yeah, it resonates with me too. I'm a very kind guy outside right. of the ring, but there needs to be a time as a man that we may need to use it. I think every man should know how to defend himself. So far, I liked what Dave had to say. But then as I continued to ask my question, I suddenly got an answer that was not part of my plan. There's a lot of people who think like, either you're a fighter or you're not a fighter. Well, I'm say what my coach said, I think there's people that will never be fighters. Mm -hmm. I think there's, mm -hmm. I think, I think there's some people that can be great martial artists, they can be great right. training partners, they mm -hmm. can fight, but it, it's not meant for everybody, I think. I, I, to be a, a, a full-on professional, sure. kill, yeah. you can be a professional fighter, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a champion, you're gonna right. be a win, you can lose yeah. a lot. And there it was. My elaborate plan of making a cool video on the message that anyone can be a fighter fell apart. Following my training with Dave, I was left puzzled, realizing that I just failed delivering the message I wanted to deliver through my video. But then, I realized something important. I usually rely on other people to tell me the answer. But even if my opinion was different from Dave's, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily wrong. I still believe that anyone who commit themselves to following the path of a fighter and do the right type of training by constantly training against pressure can become a fighter. And I believe that by training with Dave, learning more about his incredible mindset 
and getting closer to the most brutal martial art out there, I came one more step closer to becoming a person capable of fighting myself. If you want to see how I tried to make Aikido work against Kudo, click on this video right here. Thank you for watching, and I wish you to own your journey.